I know there's a lot of you guys out there who only own the base game on Borderlands 3, and by golly jeepers, this is the build video for you. This is my base game, Zane. Do it all, level 72, mayhem 10, mayhem 11 build. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I wanna make this short and sweet. I wanna stick to the point, show you guys what this thing can do. You guys saw the montage at the beginning. You can see already that this thing is capable of outputting ridiculous damage, even though we're only using base game gear. I know a lot of times people like to talk about power creep in games like this and sure there is some power creep there's certain items that are better than old items but i want people to know that the base game versions of a lot of things in this game are pretty damn awesome so with that let's go ahead and show off the gear the most important pieces of gear in this build are the magnificent pistol this is my go-to pistol whenever you have this thing on this one's a double barrel as the alternate fire mode and you have to use the digiclone active regenerate 30 percent of mag ammo per second that makes this thing basically a like an infinity pistol from Borderlands 2. At the Lucian's Call and various elements, we got the Butcher and various elements. We got a Rowan's Call and various elements. We use the Frozen Heart Shield most of the time when I'm doing bosses, though. I like to slap on the stopgap or even maybe the Transformer, depending on the boss. For the class mods, I'm almost exclusively going to use the Executor, but I did include some other options on here for you guys as well. For the grenade, I like to use the Recurring Hex when I'm mobbing. I like to switch over to the Piss Grenade when I'm doing bossing. For the Artifact, I do Icebreaker Victory Rush almost all the time. Um, but whenever I'm doing a boss fight, I will switch to the Snowdrift Victory Rush. This way I can slide and get out of danger fast. Plus, this one has area of effect damage. And if you saw in the montage, I use the Grease Trap a lot. That's a pistol. And that's what does massive splash damage to enemies. So slap this thing on and also switch to the Executor class mod that has the splash damage roll on it for bosses. Other gear included with this build, obviously Sandhawks and all the different elements. We got the No Pew Pew Redistributors. We got the OPQ system. This thing is still God tier. We got us a nice Cryo Boom sickle we got the needle guns in various elements i love this gun this is a probably the best all-around tdr weapon well one of them at least we've also got a leuda you guys remember this thing from borderlands 2 it's still amazing in this game we got a back burner slap this thing on in conjunction with the transformer shield and as long as you're using the shock one then you're going to keep yourself in the ammo and not take any shock damage from it as well multi-tap is one of the best pistols in the game that not a lot of people seem to know about and another great pistol is the maggie we got the star healer looks on this build as well another cryo weapon this one doesn't get talked about often enough but it's a great gun the grease trap like i showed you guys in the montage at the beginning if i have this thing in my hand and i switch it to the alternate fire mode of hot grease the clone always keeps it on whatever the main firing mode is which is fire starter so i will be applying hot grease and the clone is applying the fire starter which makes it do crazy splash damage and that thing is just really great you get it from the cartels in case you guys didn't know we've We've also included an affinity pistol on here we've got the hive a highly underrated rocket launcher the sleeping giant this thing is just a fun smg it kind of goes burr the hellwalker everybody knows about the hellwalker this thing's one of my favorite weapons of all time and we've got a unforgiven let's go ahead and show the skill tree blue tree pumpkin spice tree and mountain dew tree and i'm going to explain the different things real quick as well nothing in the purple tree because that would be dlc all right in the green tree we've only done two different skills here this one allows me to freeze enemies and slow them just by hitting critical hits this one allows me to get my action skill cooldown back faster and just by having these two skills the 10 points in here we're able to also switch to barrier at any time and throw on some other barrier augments as well and the pumpkin spice tree we've got the digi clone as our action skill and double barrel the capstone on this tree allows your clone to have a copy of whatever gun you hold in your hand when you summon the clone for example if i summon the clone right now i'm holding the unforgiven if i summon the clone right now i'm holding the butcher if i summon the clone right now now I'm holding the Rowan's Call. He will get whatever weapon I'm holding in my hand is the long story short of this. For the augments that I use on the clone, I like to do Doppelbanger. This allows me to despawn the clone whenever, say, I clear an area and I got to run to the next area. I can despawn the clone to get that action skill cooldown faster. It also allows me to trigger action skill end anointments much faster. You can also use this to resummon the clone faster, which allows you to trigger action skill start anointments again. The other augment that I use on this is which one's real. This one allows the clone to take more action aggro from all the enemies i use one point in duct tape mod one point in fractal frags quick breather old you and boom enhance these skills right here <laughs> it's only four points and it does so much for you right here five points if you count duct tape mod duct tape mod makes me immune to my own guns and grenade damage which is amazing fractal frags allows my clone to throw a copy of my grenade which is great when you're doing the piss grenade versus bosses for example or even when you're doing the the hex grenades and you just want to put a lot of dots on enemies quick breather allows me to swap places 
places with my clone and heals the clone for 50% of its health, which is great if the clone's in a little bit of trouble, just switch places with him real quick. Old U allows me to get out of fight for my life if I'm down, but my clone is still out. I can hold down L1 or R1. It'll kill off my clone. It'll restore me back to 100% max health and bring me back to life. And obviously, boom, enhance. Your clone will consume up to three grenades, and for every grenade consumed, it will gain increased gun damage, max health, fire rate, reload speed, and digi-clone duration. So it behooves you to pick up grenades as you're playing using this build. Obviously, synchronicity and Donnybrook are great since we're doing two action skills. We're going to try and keep them up as much as possible. We got our time to keep our action skills going. All right, on to the blue tree. This is where most of your damage comes from. In this tree, you got violent speed, violent momentum. Those two pair so beautifully together. You just run fast. You do lots more damage. We got the reload speed bonus. We got our drone dropping our grenades on enemies as well. You only need a single point in salvation to heal yourself as long as you got a kill skill active you're going to heal yourself very well i think like rog nozzle borderlands 2 level healing with just a single point in this we got c and red this used to be the capstone and this one whenever you activate an action skill this will toggle all of your kill skills on then we got violent violence in playing dirty this is uh, lots of extra fire rate and lots of extra projectiles going out at enemies we got good misfortune to keep our action skill going as much as possible and death fall is close this one you get that kill skill bonus of 25 percent and it increases your kill skill duration by seven seconds which is really really good for the augments that we're using for the sentinel we're using winter's drone to freeze enemies and bad dose to debuff enemies those are both great skills that's the skill tree we are using guardian rank for this because you know i've earned it i'm going to use it we are also playing on mayhem 11 mayhem 10 and 11 are identical despite this thing that you get more xp and iridium and all that stuff on mayhem 10 it's not true this has been tested and proven mayhem 10 mayhem 11 are identical but mayhem 11 gets rid of modifiers and to me modifiers just don't increase the fun level at all so i don't like to do them so with that let's go ahead and show this build in action a little bit more versus some mobbing stuff and here in a moment we'll get to the final boss of this area and you guys can see what we do versus him so if you have any questions about this build feel free to ask i'm actually going to swap over to this uh the unforgiven while my clone is hitting crits so you can see the kind of damage that it can increases to when clone is hitting crits it's pretty ridiculous also the drone when the drone is hitting crits i'm getting bonus uh, just by holding the unforgiven as well let's go ahead and move the clone forward you can move your clone at any time just by going to wherever you want the clone to be and hitting your action skill button one time don't hold it down because that'll despawn the clone so if we want to bring him over here boom just like that now he's shooting that guy and as you can see, the faster I move, the more damage the clone and uh, drone are going to do as well. So you want to constantly be moving with this as well. But yeah, just by holding the Unforgiven in our hands, we get lots of extra damage. It's pretty wild, honestly. It's, it's kind of crazy how much stronger everything gets when you do that. But it's a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. If you're like me and you like to run and gun, then this build is just tip top, dude. You're not going to have much more fun than doing this, honestly. But yeah, just make sure you're constantly moving your clone. And especially like if you put your clone like right in front of somebody and your clone using a splash damage weapon like the sandhog or the grease trap make sure you move your clone away so say this is an enemy right here and your clone is like this with the enemy make sure you back him up like this so that he's not going to nuke himself with splash damage weapons and as you see when our action skill runs out we need to make sure that we swap to something where we can keep ourselves alive with salvation so the butcher is great for that i can also freeze enemies really well with this too you can see because we hit lots of crits really fast so helps out tremendously with that and then before you know it you'll have your action skills back uh due to all those awesome skill tree skills and boom just like that our action skills back but i'm gonna keep my uh clone stashed away until we get to the boss so i don't have to wait for him to uh to respawn again so we can handle this stuff on our own no problem all right cool so now we're heading into the final boss so this boss uh, has a armor bar we want to make sure we use something corrosive against him or <laughs> we can just get stupid and throw on the grease trap and just not care how about that so Let's go grease trap. We'll throw on our splash damage stuff. So we do that extra area of effect damage. We'll throw on our piss grenade and that should do it. All right. So make sure that on your grease trap, you switch to hot grease. It doesn't matter what you're on. When you summon the clone, the clone is always going to be on the default mode for a weapon. You cannot switch the clones fire mode on their weapon. It just can't be done, unfortunately. But that's what makes this hot grease trick so, so damn good on the clone. 
And as you see, even though this is uh, fire versus armor, it does crazy damage with the clone. Now I'll actually show you the old you. Boom, there we go. By me hitting that button, it despawns the clone, but gives me a second win. So it's a sacrifice that you sometimes need to make. All right, but now we got clone back, apply some more hot grease, and all I gotta do is just run. Clone's gonna do most of the work for me. You don't wanna go in front of your uh, clone wherever they're shooting because they will nuke you with the hot grease, by the way. So be careful with that. But yeah, as you can see, this, again, this is a raid boss. So the damage we're doing, I didn't even have the Sentinel out. So now we'll do even more damage. <laughs> I didn't even summon the Sentinel that time. So yeah, you can see the damage goes up tremendously. And this guy has, I can't remember exactly how much health he has, but it's an astronomical amount. So this gives you an idea of just how strong this build is. So yeah. That basically sums up the build. This, uh, this is a lot of fun, man. Even though, you know, we're limited to uh, base game stuff, there's amazing loot that you can use in the base game. Ooh, I'll throw this on the build for you guys. A nice times two chaos and sweet. We'll just slap that on the build too, why not? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon for more. Let me know which character you'd like to see next, whether it's Amara, Flack, or Moe's. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.